Just arrived at Bagel Lake, north, uh, north side campsite, uh, four and a half hour uh, travel on back roads, uh, service provided by Norm, the battalion of uh, Pelletier's campground in St. Francis. It's been uh, a long but comfortable ride. So now the canoe is all packed up. And there's Back Pistol Pete, pack. my Back paddling pack. partner. Back We're going to be pack. We're ready to go. taking on the mighty St. John River. Done deal. 120 miles approximately. First campsite target, Flaws Bogan, in that direction. Here we go. Flaws Bogan Camp. What do you think, Pistol? I think that's a great garbage table. <laughs> right there. A great stove. <laughs> well, this place cooking. We'll be sleeping in half an hour. <laughs> We're at Floss Bogan Cabin. Started out at Baker Lake today, about a nine mile paddle. Uh, Add that to the uh, four and a half hour gravel road shuttle from uh, Norm Latalian. And uh, we are ready to stop here. Uh, so we're just getting situated at the cabin you see behind me. Pistol Pete just got the fire started. There is a wood stove inside the cabin. The weather's beautiful. And uh, we're just relaxing at this point. Absolutely beautiful here. Uh, incredible silence. Just animals. Just wildlife. Hearing a whole bunch of ruckus in the background. And a bunch of ducks and stuff. So, I'm we heading that way tomorrow. Continue down the St. John River. River is going to build. It's uh, we already ran into some class one plus, even two plus. Uh, well, two class twos earlier today. We took some water over the bow and the stream from Baker to here, and uh, you know, it is what it is. Just some weight in the canoe. We're figuring it out, getting ready for the the big rapids. You know, when you think about it, Pistol Pete and I, we're in the middle of nowhere right now. And uh, our thought process is we, we are the only ones on the river at this time, at least by the outfitter that delivered us to Baker Lake today, Norm. Uh, we know there are people coming in a couple days. However, uh, this, this is one of our targets the, the cabin here at Flaws Bogan, we really wanted to experience this cabin. A lot of history here. Most of the campsites on the St. John River are uh, based on old logging homesteads that uh, served a lot of the loggers along the way. They were fed, and the history dates back to 1820, really. So, you know, this, this was a, a lot of logging history on this river dating back for many years and, and then it kind of petered off in about uh, 1960s I, I believe so uh, it's an amazing historical river it's a naturally free-flowing river here in Maine 
uh, no dams, no dam control. So you have a two week, three week window uh, potentially to run this river. Uh, you know, <clears throat> unless there's of course heavy rains and, and snow melt, something like that. However, we caught this just right. The water levels are supporting uh, what we want to do on this river, which is taking uh, a trip for all the way from Bigger Lake in uh, northwestern Maine to St. Francis uh, on the St. John River. So that's a section of the river that we're familiar with to a certain extent. Uh, we ran the Allegash last year, but uh, we did not run it all the way to St. Francis. This year, my father and I have decided that's what we want to do. It's an extra 12, 13 miles of paddling, but uh, certainly we're going to do that and have a ball with it. So one more uh, panning here of uh, Flaws Bogan Camp, old log cabin established years ago, uh, maintained by people that use it. It's open to the public. Uh, first come, first serve. Uh, just, you know, be courteous and pick up after yourself and leave it clean for the next person. That's what this cabin's all about. Here it is. That home. It's a home in the middle of nowhere. The St. John River. Where'd those cots come from, Dad? A mice infested, rat infested, <laughs> doggone uh, space that was supposed to be really, really nice. And it ended up being full of mice feces, chipmunk feces, everything else. Yeah, we we made the wise, the, you made the wise decision, Dave, to beat on your dad and say, no, we're not staying in here yeah. tonight, we'll get yeah. sick. Yeah. So this is what we got. We got this is fire. what we've improvised as Lewis and uh, Clark. Yeah, we're doing all right. Look at it. It's even good looking. Yeah, it's going to be 35 degrees tonight. We get a pump up the oven, So hopefully we survive.
As soon as you get through, as soon as the bow breaks, you gotta you pull. River still showing signs of winter, uh, the remnants of winter. We have ice chunks all along the river. And then also, ice had uh, reached this level here where it scrapes all these trees and we're seeing signs of that all along the river. So this uh, river was quite high, as always. They say the ice out event for the St. John River is quite dramatic. Today, we're just on a little stroll, enjoying our time, scouting the rapids that we're going to be running tomorrow. There's Pistol Pete, Chief Red Toe. His moccasin blew out, so we've got uh, red duct tape holding them together right now. That's why we're looking at it this way. It's pretty much right down the middle there. You might have to go one side or the other side. There'll be some maneuvering. Fast though. I'm running fast. Pretty good. This is an uh, insulator it's attached to an old, old Class 7 telephone pole. And the reason why this is what they call iron wire or open wire. And they clear a path from here, from one logging camp to the next. And they communicate over it. Of course, probably, this probably has been down since the 40s, 30s or 40s. But you had some telephone guys out here doing this stuff. And uh, what a job, huh? Man, I thought I was doing good carrying my fishing pole and my telephone truck in Portland, Maine, but... There's a rite of passage up here, but uh, pretty interesting to find out. Right here in the middle in the of nowhere. Nowhere. We're in the middle of nowhere. At Ledge, Ledge Rapids, in, uh, which we'll be, which we'll be running tomorrow, and it looks pretty, looks pretty inviting, looks pretty exciting. So we're at Ledge Rapids. I wanted to stop in the cabin, and the cabin's uh, pretty much in disrepair overridden with mice and uh, mice fecal matter and everything else like that so my father and I decided to move on down to the next site at Ledge Rapids and, and set up uh, the rapids that I showed you first in this shot uh, we're gonna run those first thing tomorrow and uh, it's, it's been a fun ride today uh, <clears throat> from Flaws Bogan all the way to Ledge Rapids so uh, still a long ways to go but we're having a blast and uh, having a blast with Pistol Pete
lunch site's right up here, Brad says. And Pistol. What's the date today? I forgot all time. No idea. 
What do you have to say, though, Pistol, about the trip? The, the trip was the uh, most perfect trip you could have, I've, I've ever experienced it, it, on the river. Done the St. John four times now, and I doubt if I'll ever experience a, the, the river, the flow, the, the uh, companionship, the, uh, the beautiful weather. Just had a little spit of rain this morning, and uh, now we're now we're ready to head home to our honeys. And uh, I'm, of course, I'm I'm been thinking of uh, I'm ready yeah, to go home and see how. Mom, there we go. We're heading home. How mom is doing? Mission complete. Yeah. sure you're going to be able to hear with this wind. The group just headed out and uh, it was on the second uh, second day of our trip that we met up with a great group of guys. Jake, Ryan, Chris and his son Isaiah and we ran the rest of the river, uh, the St. John River that you see right behind me uh, for seven days bridge behind me is Dickey Bridge. That marks the end of the trip. My father and I, we were, we were going to continue on uh, down the river all the way to St. Francis where we left our vehicle. However, we decided not to do that today. Uh, big rapids and, and big black rapids were enough for us for, for this trip and uh, we made it out uh, without dumping. And, uh, an extraordinary trip extraordinary moment uh, with my father, Pistol Pete, and, and, and to meet that group of guys was uh, extraordinary. Uh, very knowledgeable canoeists, and uh, together we all worked together and we all made it down, and a uh, great trip. The weather was outstanding, sunny like this every day. Uh, the wind posed some problems at times, but even so, we were uh, average cruising speed on the river, it was about six miles per hour. Uh, some pretty aggressive rapids at times, uh, multiple sets of rapids, but overall, just a beauty trip. It was uh, truly something I'll never forget, especially doing it with my father, but with that group of uh, awesome people, uh, it made it even better. Um, but this is my bucket list item to do with my father. As a young boy, I always, always, heard him speak of doing this river trip you know and this you don't get weather like this from the stories that I've heard yeah, this is this is weather that is uncharted really I mean uh, we've had 72 degree weather we, cold nights you know cold nights uh, we had some freezes you know we woke up in the morning and uh, our water was frozen things like that a little cold sleeping but that's nothing compared to some of these trips that these people have done on the St. John River through the years I mean, you could get six inches of snow, you know, and, and we saw nothing like that. This was just a beauty, beauty trip. So, content, and one check off for that bucket list item. And ultimately, doing it with my father, the ultimate. It's, uh, it's, can't even put it in words, really, how special that is to me. So, been invited back next year to go with this group with the people that we met up and hopefully hopefully we can do that because uh, it's worthwhile signing out st. John River trip 2020 complete mission complete